I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I was born into, the church I loved with all my heart and taught my children to believe in, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I knew Joseph Smith was a prophet. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. I didn't start out challenging my belief in the church. Believe me, this new look at things has been gut-wrenching. I know there are those of you out there watching who are in as much turmoil as I was, but I hope that God will lead you to the truth Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who wanna share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Tonight we have our last guest from the Adams Road Band, Stefan Dennis with us. Mm -hmm. Stefan, appreciate you coming and sharing your story. The last of our Adams, uh, Adams, band road, Adams Road Band <laughs> group. So we appreciate you coming and tell Absolutely. us a little bit about your history as a Latter-day Saint. Well, it's actually pretty rich. Um, I come from a multi-generational Mormon family Long um, time, on, my, huh? on my father's side. My mother was a convert to the LDS Church when she was 16 and after serving a mission uh, in the Philippines, she met my father um, after he returned wow. from his mission wow. uh, in New Mexico, I believe it was, and so they got married. Um, but my father's side uh, is all LDS, going back, you know, multiple generations. Um, and I, I, it was a very strong LDS family, you know, from wow. the time I was a young child. We always had a family home evening where we would read the Book <laughs> of Mormon for an hour yeah. uh, every Monday night. My parents were uh, very active in the church. Uh, my mother was a Relief Society president. Uh, she had also served in multiple uh, young women's callings. You know, she was camp director for the stake for a while. And, wow. And uh, so they were very active, and my father, uh, you know, um, as an uh, elder and then uh, um, high a high priest in the church. Yeah, uh, a lot of he was always, callings and Yeah, stuff. exactly. He was always pretty active, and, you know, yeah. they were temple-going Mormons. Wow. Um, they would always take us to do baptisms for the dad, and so, <laughs> so growing up, you know, I was very involved in scouting and all the extracurricular activities. You know, I myself had all the, the youth callings growing up, and in uh, you know priesthood and then <laughs> later on in elders quorum and yeah and uh, how many brothers and sisters did you have I'm the oldest of four and I have three younger sisters oh okay uh, you know and they all grew up very uh, active as well so yeah. we were a very close knit family and and even the extended family was very you know tight we would always get together and uh, uh, you know have um, spiritually involved uh, family reunions and things really? like that. Oh, that's great. So do you feel like you had a testimony of Joseph Smith? And oh, absolutely. The Book of you know, Mormon? I, and I uh, you know, tears welled up in my eyes when I thought about the first vision and, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I read the Book of Mormon and, uh, you, know, you know, the Doctrine and Covenants. And actually, I was one of those people who was very interested in the deep doctrine of the Mormon Church. You know, I, I loved the, the idea of becoming a god and and uh, um, being exalted and you know I wanted to know all of the little details to that because you know I I genuinely did want to meet the best of my potential yeah and you believe that that's that was your destiny absolutely or you felt you probably felt a lot of pride being raised in the church the way yes. you were being born and raised in the church I a lot I of know pride. I did too that yep. you were here locally or, or I don't know where you were at but where were you born uh, well I was born in Farmington New Mexico but oh. I was raised in uh, Utah in were the Salt Lake area yeah. uh, I grew just, up in Riverton just a lot of pride with our pioneer heritage and everything yeah. I'd like to get back a Eventually, to uh, if I can remember this, but to get back to this uh, 
your story about the first vision a little bit, but explain how now you went uh, through seminary and you went on mm -hmm. uh, a mission. I you did. called on a mission? I was. I was called to Orlando, Florida, okay. <clears throat> which is where I met a couple of the uh, Adams Road guys okay. uh, over time. Um, but I was uh, an older uh, one in that um, I knew Steve, but Micah and Joseph had yet to go on their missions. In fact, they didn't go. Uh, and for about a year and a half after I had returned home. Mm. Um, but I knew Steve, um, he was older, and, uh, and Jay was converted to the Mormon church while I was on my Mormon mission. Oh, so you met him? And, mm -hmm. Okay. I knew him. And, and had you uh, uh, had any questions about the Mormon church through, through your mission? Uh, absolutely not. Um, I had run-ins with Christians, and, and actually I never had any experiences where um, I was approached in love by, by Christians. Um, I, I had a couple of experiences where, uh, you know, Christians just kind of, uh, you know, were not as kind to me as they could have been. Mm -hmm. And so my view of Christianity came from uh, my experiences with um, non-Mormon you know, what I, I perceived mm -hmm. as, a, as, you know, people who were lost and didn't have the truth. And my perspective was, well, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, that they just, you know, don't know the truth and they don't, ha you know, know right. God and all, right. all those, you know, excuses that come with that thought. Um, uh, but um, so, you know, I, I, I studied, you know, hard on my mission. I, I served well. And when you say studied, you're talking, say, Book of Mormon? Oh, did yeah. Did you read the Bible much? Um, I did read the Bible. Did you? And in fact, it was actually on my mission that I believe God started drawing me to His Word because I, I read the Bible quite a bit. I fell in love with the teachings of Jesus, uh, with the uh, epistles and the Gospels. Um, I didn't understand very much of it, especially <laughs> in Hebrews and, and yeah. Romans. Um, now, was that unusual to be in the Bible much? As a missionary? Um, you know, not in Florida, Orlando. I think I don't around. I remember the, being drawn to the Bible at all on my mission. The reason that I was drawn to the Bible originally is because I was running into a lot of evangelical Christians while I was tracting and things you like that. Wanted to be better prepared. I, I to wanted to be better prepared. I wanted to be able to confront them, yeah. you know, with the Bible and and you know show them everything. In fact, I had a, a Bible that was specifically marked um, that you know more or less showed where Mormon doctrine was in the Bible. However, we know that it's taken out of context and, and, and you know, it <laughs> it's, doesn't really back up Mormon doctrine at all. Uh, so at any rate, I fell in love with the Bible. Um, and I actually remember praying on my mission that God would eventually send a, a translation of the Bible that we could trust. Because I still believed, you know, that because we had the JST and, and yeah. that, um, and that you know that the full the fullness of the gospel in wasn't the sense in the wasn't in the Bible, even though you know it says that in the introduction to uh, you know the Book of Mormon, um, you know I knew that that all of Mormon doctrine wasn't in the Bible, you know as far as eternal marriage and endowments and yeah. and, and things like that. Um, and you just wished or hoped that God would eventually give us a Bible that had, had all those plain and precious things put back in. Absolutely. Yeah. I was very much looking forward to that. <laughs> um, so I served and I came home and, uh, uh, you know, I, I got a job and, and, you know, entered the dating world and, yeah. and all that. And a couple of years went by um, and I was still very active. I went to my home ward for a while in the singles ward. and. Uh, uh, served there. Met a, met a young lady? And <clears throat> I did. Um, you know, I dated for a while and then kind of took a break from that because um, I, I wanted to focus a little bit on my spirituality and just, and, and you know, find out a little bit more about who I was before I went out and got married. I, I learned a yeah. lot of lessons, as we all do in life. And, uh, and then I met uh, my wife, Sarah, um, through Institute. Mm. I went to an Institute activity one night, and she was on the Institute Council in Sandy. Wow. And uh, she was also the young women's president in her home ward. Wow. And so um, through a series of uh, remarkable, not coincidences, but God <laughs> leading me to her, you know, we, uh, we knew we were right for each other. And I, I, yeah. I said, you know, I'm never going to meet um, somebody that's stronger in the LDS church. And so, you know, you know, uh, you know, when you meet that person that you always want to marry above you, sure. and uh, I definitely <laughs> grabbed onto her as quick as I could. <laughs> and you got married in the temple? I did. Uh, we got married in the Tempanogos Temple. Wow. Um, and uh, that was in 2006, uh, January 28th. And, and, you know, we were excited about that. And in fact, we, we prepared so much to go to the temple. We, right after she got her endowments, I think a month earlier, we were going to the temple together at least once a week, if not twice or three times. Wow. 
Um, and uh, as a couple, as hard as it is to believe, we wanted to be as worthy as possible. You know, we never even kissed until we were over the altar in the temple. And that, oh that, that was our dedication to each other and to our religion and trying to be worthy yeah. of uh, our faith that we lived. So, wow. um, so, so this was 2006, and then what happens? Uh, you've got three children now. Is that, uh, two yeah? children. Two children, I'm sorry. I have a okay. five-year-old and a, and a two-year-old. Okay. Um, so, so what happens after you're married? And well, we just, you know, I, I uh, was going to school and, you know, had a full-time job, and, and yeah. she was working, and, and about a year later, we had our first son. Okay. Um, and, uh, and at that time, you know, I really wanted to rededicate myself uh, as a Mormon, you know, because I realized, okay, you know, I have a son now. You know, I married this is serious. I want to be the best priesthood holder and the husband that I can. Best you can be, yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so I, I really rededicated myself. I went out and bought, you know, a new uh, quad of LDS <laughs> scriptures, and, and I, I started studying pretty vigorously. And wow. I wanted to genuinely improve myself so that I could be a good example to my son. And where was this at? Was uh, that here? In yeah, it was in, uh, I, I believe we lived in Sandy at the time. Okay. Oh, yeah, um, you mentioned Sandy. Okay, so then what happens here? So I'm rededicating myself to the Mormon church, you know, um, <laughs> and trying to genuinely perfect myself yeah. as the Mormons understand it, you know, be ye perfect as you have to, yeah. you know, be perfect yourself essentially through following the, the rules the and ordinances and, ordinance, and, yeah. and covenants of Mormonism. And, uh, you know, through a series, a, a long series of a lot of different things that happened um, between friends and family and just, you know, my relationship with Sarah, my wife, I was quickly discovering that even though I was perfecting the outer vessel as much as I could, I was still the same person on the inside, <laughs> which was That's a wretched kind of a shocking uh, uh, shocking, isn't it? Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah exactly. And, and God, you know, was showing me and drawing me to Him and making me recognize that despite myself and despite all the effort that I was putting into it um, and trying to be the best Mormon that I could, my wife and I were still attending the temple on a weekly basis that I was not really actually truly becoming a better person. Um, wow. And, uh, and I, I, I began to get really frustrated. Do and you think other people feel that same, uh, same feeling? I really think a lot of them do. What do they do with that feeling? They ignore it? Uh, I think a lot of them definitely try to ignore it, you know, yeah. um, and I think that's where depression and being unsatisfied with things, you know, begins to set in and then they, they try and pursue other, other worldly goals and desires to and fill that to fill that void to fill that gap yeah. you know and and th i believe that's a universal experience and that's why jesus tells everybody in the bible you know those who are heavy laden you know come to me and i will give them rest everybody is heavy laden uh, you know with the things that they're trying to do to themselves and with themselves and and you know the things that they pursue in the world and, uh, and the stresses of, of not being worthy to god and everybody is created i i believe with that you know, we're all sinners. Our flesh right. is naturally contrary to God in every respect. Um, and so, you know, everybody has that desire to do good, but they don't have the ability to carry it out, as Paul describes in Romans. Wow. And God was really uh, starting to make me see that I was a sinner, that I indeed was not worthy of an all-holy God, and that despite, you know, my, my best efforts, um, you know, and... and Things that I, I had read in the Bible on my mission just burned within me, such as, you know, if you even look on a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery already. Uh, so you just didn't feel worthy. Uh, absolutely. Uh, not on the inside, to, yeah. despite what I was doing and despite, right. you know, my involvement in the LDS church and, wow. and, uh, and the activity there, um, you know, I knew that, you know, I, I had all the worst sins that Jesus describes, you know, in the heart. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know... And then looking back, um, I, I knew, and, and t you know, I talked about the first vision, how that brought me to tears. The yeah. reason that did is not because of Joseph Smith. It's because Jesus Christ, you know, represented love to me and compassion and the desire for uh, his creations to come to him. Um, and I remember t tuning into a Christian radio station one time on my way home from work, and uh, I, I don't remember the song or anything like that, but I remember just thinking about Jesus dying on the cross and having no understanding of that from a biblical perspective. Um, it just brought me to tears. Wow. And, 
and I later realized through reading the Bible that, you know, the punishment for uh, sin is spiritual and physical death. So how could the atonement take place anywhere but on the cross? You know, the sacrifice for sins. Exactly. Where Jesus, sacrifice. you know, uh, was laid, um, God laid on him the sins of the world and he put it to death on the cross in, in his flesh after fulfilling the law perfectly. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I, you know, later realized all these things through studying the Bible. But um, about a year went by into my marriage after I was really starting to rededicate myself and at the same time becoming more and more aware gradually on a daily basis that I was not worthy of an all holy God. Um, and that, you know, I was going to die and, and come to the judgment seat and... Knowing that you weren't Knowing uh, that worthy. I weren't. And that was driving And you were me. learning this from the Bible mm -hmm. and from scriptures that you had heard. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't studying the Bible per se during all of this. I was studying, you know, the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants. Mm -hmm. um, I still didn't believe that I could fully trust the Bible, um, even though I wanted to, yeah. I, I, you know, like I'd mentioned. And, um, and I had heard about Adam's Road forming because this was, you know, uh, Micah got kicked off of his mission in uh, heard 2006. About that. I, yeah. Oh, yeah, news like that <laughs> travels fast, especially, you know, when you're from the same mission and, right. and, you know, all the missionaries know each other. Sure. And, uh, and they had formed this Christian ministry, Adam's Road, and everybody was saying, you know, that, that they're an anti Mormon band and all this stuff. And, and I, I knew Steve and, and I knew Jay and I knew, you know, the love that they had. And I just, something was bothering me about the whole situation. Wow. And, uh, and, and, and it took me a lot of months to, you know, before I just gave up on myself, gave up on, on you know, trying to make myself a better person because I knew that I couldn't. God had really revealed that to me wholeheartedly. Um, and, and by the way, I wasn't telling my wife Sarah any of this. I was just going to ask, did you share <laughs> any of this with your wife? No. 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 Uh, uh, and she didn't know that I um, got to that point where I contacted the band and just asked them, you know, look, guys, what's going on? Um, I, I feel that I'm not worthy of God, you know, despite my own best efforts, uh, despite trying to do my part, you know, it's not perfecting my, my conscience. It's not, you know, I, I feel like I, I uh, am not worthy of God. And, and they, just, they shared the gospel with me and said, look, there's no way that you can make yourself worthy of God because you're not worthy of God. You were born that way in the flesh. <laughs> and, it, you know, the only way that you can approach God and enter his kingdom is through grace and accepting uh, you know, the forgiveness of sins. Was that, this new concept to oh, you? Oh, yeah, it was. I had never heard it in my life. And, wow. I, and I, I just took a deep breath and I said, praise God, you know. Uh, really, it just made sense oh, yeah. immediately? It, it clicked. It clicked with everything I'd read in the Bible where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, that, that Jesus is the forgiveness of sins. He is our yeah. one mediator. Um, you know, basically, I saw right away that it does not... A church that saves, it is Jesus, it is Jesus. Saves, that, you know, that, that saves. Isn't that awesome? And it just, it, 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 it hit me, and I still didn't fully understand the gospel in relation to all my Mormon upbringing, you know, yeah. as far as the spirit world. More things and, to learn. <laughs> oh, there was a lot more to learn. I, I, you know, there were, I had a lot of questions, and I, I talked for months, yeah. you know, about my questions, and I was doing research, and, and, you know, looking into LDS church history and everything, and, and uh, my, from my wife's perspective, she thought I was just studying away, and, you know. So she still didn't have any she, idea you were questioning. No. Um, she did not. Well, did you learn now, kind of bring in the first vision again? Did you then realize that perhaps Joseph Smith never had the first vision? Did that oh, come? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, and I read later that, you know, his story of that had changed, and that, that didn't really surprise me changed considering. Changed over time, yeah. It, it, you know, everything else um, was so shady in Mormon history, you know, that this, that I could not be following a God of love with yeah. everything that I was finding out. Um, and, and that there was no forgiveness in, in the Mormon church, only punishment. And, wow, that's interesting. And, uh, and people carry that burden. Many people carry that for years and years mm -hmm. and never come to this freedom in Christ that right. you're talking about. Right, uh, because they're afraid of the punishment and the guilt trip that you have to go through. I mean, yeah. we're already guilty. That is a sure sign that we're going to approach the throne of grace with no grace. Um, you know, unless we accept, you know, 
Jesus Christ unless we know the gospel and, yeah. and, and approach that with full confidence of knowing we've been forgiven of our sins because of what Jesus did on the cross. Wow. Um, and so I, I got to the point where Mormonism just meant nothing to me Did, anymore. Were you still going to church? Yes, I was. I was. So um, there was a little, not hypocrisy, but a little conflict there. Right. And what I what got, finally happened with your wife? Uh, well, um, she could tell that I just wasn't embracing it anymore. She thought I was just getting a little depressed and, you know, uh, things of the world were starting to creep up. And, you know, she had her own little opinions, but she thought, okay, well, he'll get by it. You know, everybody goes through hard times. Um, and then one uh, afternoon, we were having a conversation about the fall of Adam and Eve, and I don't remember exactly what I said, but what I, whatever it was about the fall of Adam and Eve conflicted with Mormon doctrine. I think it was probably the part <laughs> in the Book of Mormon about where, you know, it says that Adam sinned, so men might be, and men are that they might have joy. Um, I said something that refuted that, and she knew right away, and everything just clicked with her. Yeah, her antenna went up. And yep. <laughs> she said, she said right away, she said, you believe what Adam's Road believes, don't you? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> because she knew I knew some of them on my mission. Yeah. And it just clicked. You know, I was on the phone a lot. I was studying the scriptures, uh, the Bible a lot, you know, looking into church history and everything. Yeah. Um, and I, I confessed to her, and it was such a burden lifted off of me. And, and the reason I was afraid of telling her is because it's common in the Mormon church that when one spouse loses faith, they encourage them to get divorced. And I know you know this happens all yeah, the time. Yeah. In fact, I have a good friend who uh, confessed that he no longer believes in the LDS church and uh, his wife's family and even his family and his bishop encouraged her to her divorce to him divorce. and she did. Oh, she did? And she did. It's a, it's a, it's a heartbreaking story. Now, there to was me. a recent Ensign article that uh, encouraged women to be patient that they'll come back or, you know, hope, hopefully that people would come back if, if one of the spouses yeah. changes. But I think the overall feeling is, is that that person's lost and mm -hmm. if they talk out against the church, they're going to be a son of perdition. So you yeah. really lost them. So it, it's yeah. a reaction. They feel like they have to cut out the cancerous cells. Yeah. Um, you know, and even though you're coming closer to Christ yep. and a relationship with Him uh -huh. and the Bible, mm -hmm. and they'll reject that. Absolutely, it's it's frightening. Absolutely, because yeah. in order to be a faithful LDS uh, member, you have to believe yeah. in the five pillars: um, <laughs> Joseph Smith, the Book of Mormon, uh, the restoration of the church, current prophet, current prophet, um, and then you know Jesus as as atoning for a part of your sins, and then you have to work for the rest, do after, your part after you've done. So uh, anyway, a long story short, my wife went to the temple and prayed after being you know, heartbroken that I no yeah. longer believed in it. Um, she came back unsatisfied, and then the next day she asked me, okay, show me in the Bible what you know. Oh my goodness. And I handed over my personal study notes, and she could not believe what she read in the Bible. Uh, Stephen's speech about, um, in Acts 7, about God does not dwell in temples made with hands, because yeah. uh, he's created the whole universe. Um, isn't that wonderful? And that's repeated a few times in it, the Bible. It, it is. That God doesn't dwell in temples made right. of hands. Right, exactly, because he's building a spiritual house made of a body of believers, yeah. you know, the body of Christ. Um, and so that is your eternal family. And, and she just came to Christ almost right away. Oh, uh, and, praise uh, God. And, and since then, you know, we, uh, we now help the Adams Road Ministry, um, you know, kind of behind the scenes. and. and and, uh, and, you know, God has called us to that and everything that we had to face, you know, with family and friends is a, whole, is a longer, s oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a big story behind that. And, <laughs> and Probably we don't have time for that one. No. But let me ask you the common question, are Mormons Christian? Absolutely. Well, the Mormon doctrine is not Christian. It's not Christian. I was a Christian okay. while I was still a Mormon. Um, okay. I see what you mean. But, but if you become converted to the gospel of grace, which is found in the New Testament, it will eventually lead you out of Mormonism because they are completely at odds with each other. That is so wonderful to hear because that's the joyous message. And I know that all of you, <clears throat> all of you in Adams Road believe that, that uh, that's the joy of this whole message is the, mm -hmm. is the gospel of grace. Absolutely. And what Christ has done for us. Well, you do a wonderful work, and uh, you get around, uh, travel around. I know you're, you're the last one we're interviewing, so let me just ask, do you travel uh, 
uh, do you make appointments or do you, is there yeah. a way for people to contact you if they're interested in s signing you up? Um, well, yeah, or absolutely. Your schedule? Uh, AdamsRoadBand.com. Okay. Um, all the information is on there. Um, and all the band members help in, in booking the ministry. But, oh, do they? Um, I'm kind of the point of contact a little bit for that. And then, okay. um, but, uh, but yeah, so we, you know, I, I kind of work behind the scenes with so booking So if a church is interested in scheduling you, they could at least talk to you that you do present make presentations to to, to churches or yep. to groups uh, I know you were out at uh, the celebration the good cele the celebration Celebrate. on yeah on, on Saturday mm -hmm. yeah and so. did a wonderful job I enjoyed that very much and so uh, yeah that was a, a very well done event so now do you all live in Florida all we do six uh, of you <laughs> absolutely um, all the families live in Florida and, and, yeah. and you know work and uh, and, and live there and, and cooperate as a group. Yeah. Um, well, that's a great fellowship, isn't it? Just to be able to share and, and all with your testimonies and everything and, and the common bond that you have of coming out of Mormonism. Are you kind of looked down upon or out in the... Have you met some of the Mormons, active Mormons out there? In uh, I, I've seen the missionaries a couple of times and I've spoken with them. Yeah. Um, they're not permitted to actively engage us. Okay. Um, uh, but other than that, not really. Okay. Um, you know, we, we fellowship with believers out in Florida, and you know, I've been very blessed to be uh, yeah. so supported out there. And isn't the joy of the gospel this burden being lifted off of our shoulders, like you're talking about? Oh, it, it's it's and unimaginable. And you found the peace that you no, were looking for. I found the peace. I have grace, and I know that I will have eternal life with God because of what Jesus did on the cross. Yeah, and the LDS just don't understand that, do they? They don't understand. They don't yeah. know what a burden they have on their shoulders. Yeah. Well, Stefan, thanks so much for sharing your story. I appreciate it very much. Thank and you. God bless. It's a wonderful story. And uh, appreciate the Adams Road Band members sharing their stories with us over the last few weeks. And I hope you've gotten to know them better. And uh, their DVDs and CDs are out there uh, available. And you also were interviewed in... Uh, in Veiling, Unveiling Grace, yes. right? Uh, uh, a DVD that's out there that tells some of their story as well. So, well, I hope you LDS will take advantage of an opportunity to at least open your Bible, trust what these young men and what we're trying to share that uh, the gospel of grace is in the Bible and it is the gospel that Jesus and Paul taught. We'll see you next week.